The B side of the bags always seems quite forgotten about. Okay, you'll see them. Took a bit of a hammering, so I deliberately I just left these dirty just so I can show you how I go about cleaning these up because I get asked it all the time on Instagram. Alright then, this is the other side of the bag. So, first of all, we'll have a look in this pocket here. So, you'll see there's a bit of a buckle there, massive pocket there, uh, and inside there, I've got some pipe cutters. So, just got a few of these smaller pipe cutters. Uh, one there, it's a pretty newish set there. And then, just a little set there. If you look in there, you'll see we've got a nice pocket there, one there, and then there's another one there with some smaller sort of pockets in there. So, loads of stuff you can fit in there. There's also this little clip. Ridiculous amount of stuff in there. Another zip up pocket there, which is like ridiculously big. Uh, you can get your hand pretty much all the way down uh, to the bottom. So you can fit something pretty large in there, to be fair. I've not got anything in there yet. Um, again, you get this sort of small D ring that side, large D ring on that side. And if we have a look inside this side of the bag, the B side of the bag always seems quite forgotten about. Um, might not be as appealing as the other side, but that's what's in the reverse side of my bag. So if we start over at this side, obviously we've got a parts dish. Um, You've all seen these in my videos. Collect the screws or any metal parts, that's gonna sit in there. Up the top there, there's a little uh, Stabila level. Um, good for stuff like controllers, things like that. The corner, I've got this Monster Milwaukee level. This is pretty new. I got sent this by Milwaukee. And it looks like it's got a pretty good feature. So you see there, you can swivel this bit round to an angle so it's going to tell you sort of when you're at 45 or whatever angle you uh, pick so it looks like a really good feature to be fair again really strong magnets on the bottom of that one so that would be good for like leveling up, leveling up units things like that that's going to sit in the side there in the front one of my all-time favorite kits by Weera and this was actually out the advent calendar I'm trying to think what year it was, possibly like 2019 or 18. Um, you get a screwdriver, you get a micro driver, you get the bits for the micro driver. You didn't get the little Z-clop, mini Z-clop, but I've added that little mini Z-clop in there. And then you get a selection of sockets and a selection of screwdriver bits. I absolutely love this kit. Uh, this has done loads of work, paid for itself 10 times over. So that just sits in there like so. This is fairly new as well. This is not the one that I've always used, but um, we've got this JVAC edge flaring tool. Um, so that part of the flaring tool sits in that pocket. It's a large sort of neoprene pocket, so really stretchy. You can fit a good old amount of kit in there if you wanted. In the pocket above, that's the other part to the flaring block. So I can wiggle that out. That is the other part to the flaring block. Again, it is pretty new. That's why it still looks shiny. That sits in there. Got a testo meter. Obviously, you want to be checking your voltage before you do any sort of work. And then in here, we've got some service wrenches or ratchets. I've got a JVAC one, I've got what's that, an Imperial one, and then I think there's one more stuffed in there. So, another Imperial one. We all need these at some point. Backo, adjustable spanner. Again, one of the best that I've found, to be fair. This one's sort of a, a wide jaw. This opens really wide. And that gets me uh, 
that gets me onto most sort of flare nuts, things like that. So yeah, I love that. That sits in there. I've got a bottle of map gas, so reason I've got the map gas and I've got a turbo torch, a couple of heads. Um, I did used to have a little soldering or soldering slash brazing bag, but I just thought I'd, I really don't want to carry a whole bag just with the uh, brazing kit in for now. So that's one of the reasons I wanted this. Um, I just wanted to carry it all in one bag. So bottle of map gas that sits in the middle there. And then we've got one of these flexible uh, JVAC heads. I don't know if you've seen these before, but you can sort of mold that to wherever you want, which is all right for smaller pipe when you're inside. Obviously it's not going to do much outside to be honest, but um, yeah, it it's, comes in handy from time to time. So that sits in there. The other, if I move that out of the way, the other, this is the one that I've had for, I don't know how many years I've had this. This is the Rothenberger Superfire. This is my trusty um, torch head. I've had this for donkey's years and it's still going. So that just sits up in the corner there. Now we've got a little pouch. This is just a little CK pouch. And inside there, you'll see I've got the heads for the tube expanders. Um, so I have actually got another pair of tube expanders, the JVAC version, which are in my pack out. Um, but I don't always want to carry that pack out and one of the reasons was you see there look that 381 broke not so long back so uh, I did need a replacement the head sitting in that bag there and then you'll see down there look that is the tube expander so you can get a full set of tube expanders in the bottom of this bag uh, quite easily to be fair these ones are quite weighty, um, they're not the lightest of things, so I might end up just putting the JVAC ones in here because they are probably half the weight of these to be fair, so I'll see how I go. WD-40, just a little mini can of WD-40 because I always need this when carrying out repairs, getting old nuts and bolts off, things like that. A pair of these, um, these ones are dicky dyers, they're just plastic hose and pipe cutters so just for cutting overflow and uh, drain hose and stuff and they're all right not the best in the world but you know they're good enough to do the job so they sit in there I've got shoved in here i've just got actually just a bit of pipe um just a bit of five eight or a half inch with some cable ties on uh, if you're taking out or disconnecting wiring looms and stuff or cutting cable ties off pipe, you can uh, cable tie them back up after. Another pair of safety glasses there from Unilight, them ones. Um, like I said, you can never have enough glasses. I always lose them, that's why there's two pairs in here. One of the old school or original Unilights, this one's the SLR 500 maybe. Still, let's have a look. Yeah, SLR 500. Still one of my favourite lights to be fair. Really good that one, it's got like an adjustable base with the magnets on the bottom. Uh, it's got a little clip as well, so you can clip that onto things. Really good light that one. And then to finish off, we've got, I got this, I know this gets a lot of mixed reviews, but this is the uh, Milwaukee cut-off saw. So that sits in there and it's, um, let's see if I can get you the number, there you go. I find this really handy. It's not an 18 volt um, grinder. It's just a 12 volt uh, cut off saw. So, you know, it is what it is. You got to remember that. Um, I've cut threaded rod with this. I've cut channel with this. I've cut uh, feet, so condenser feet with this. Plastic pipe. Um, it's just a handy thing to have to be fair. It doesn't take up much room. So that sits in there. I run the 12 volt stuff for a lot of my kit. Um, this drill so uh, again this is the m12 impact that will sort of clip on there as well if i need it to uh, i can just clip that onto a onto a d-ring on the side or on the front so um, you just put a little two amp battery in there it doesn't take up much room at all so that's why that sits in there and that's pretty much it to be fair um, it'll probably get modified slightly as i use it a bit more but um, as a repair bag 
yeah, that's what I use. Like I said, I'm not going to lug this around walking across the city centre with this, but what I usually do, you, you'll probably see in my previous videos if you've watched them, um, I've got a pack out which is set up with things like my recovery machine, vacuum pump, um, all that kind of stuff. So when I take all that in, usually this thing, I'll just sit it on top and I'll just wheel this in with all the pack out kit so this will have all my tools in. Um, yeah, I reckon this is going to work well. I've been using it for a little while um, and it's working well so far. So Great bag. You get a shoulder strap and it comes with these cool little features, a little clip there so you can... Uh, you can just clip it on there out the way. Obviously you get this really robust sort of handle um, as with most of Vito's. And yeah, overall really good bag. You can clip, um, so things like this, this is the MB2. You can clip that onto the D-ring on the side. I definitely wouldn't want to clip anything on the side of this because I wouldn't be able to move it, but you know, the features there if you want, if you wanted to. Put some meters in there or whatever to clip on the side you can um i always get asked why are your tools so clean so these are i've left some of these pretty dirty for me to be fair um what i'm going to do i'm going to show you what i use just to clean up a, a tool um when i finish with it or every so often so i'm going to use these as an example because you all see me use these uh, from nws and these are those sort of multi-ergo pliers i was on about I was on a job this week. It was nasty, it was oily, there was crap everywhere. So you'll see that. Um, took a bit of a hammering. So I deliberately, I just left these dirty just so I could show you how I go about cleaning these up. Cause I get asked it all the time on Instagram. So I've got a tray here with a few of the things that I use. Big wipes. I'm not sponsored by big wipes or they don't pay me to say this, but I genuinely love these things. Usually I'd use the spray that you can get from Big Watts, but I've run out, I use it that much. So a few other things, WD-40, I'll put that there. I've just got some sort of degreaser spray for now because I haven't got any of the Big Watts spray left, so we'll just use that. And then this, so this is WD-40 silicon lubricant. You'll see there, look. Prevents parts from sticking, waterproofs and protects against moisture for use on metal, plastic, rubber and wood. We'll stick that there. So the first thing I'll probably do or something like this, get this WD-40 and I'll just use this to sort of clean up all the metal parts. So just spray it all with WD-40. The missus is probably going to go mad for me spraying all this. You know, you know what's utility, but... So I'll just coat everything with WD-40 and then just work whatever it is just to try and get any of that crap out. I'll leave that to soak just for a little bit um, just to get some of that crap off. So I'll be with you in one second. Right, for proper bad, get yourself a brush like this and then just like... Just work the WD-40 in. Depends on how bad they are, to be fair. But you just give it a give it a quick once over. Just get the WD-40 working. Then what I'll do, usually I get the big white spray. I've got none left, like I said. So I'll just get some of this stuff. It's just like a degreaser, and then I'll just spray it. This is if they're proper bad, to be fair. Usually you can just get away with getting a big wipe and giving them a wipe, which is what I usually do before I put them in the bag. Um, but I've left these just to show you. So again, give that a spray. I'm going to let that soak for a minute and I'll be back in a sec. Again, get yourself a brush if they're that bad. I'll just give all the handles a quick, quick once over just to agitate it all. When you've done all that, you've got it all sort of working away and you've left it to soak just get yourself one of these big wipes out so bear with me a second while i get one out get yourself the big wipe and then just wipe everything just wipe everything over with the big wipe all the metal all the handles give it a good old scrub and then i guarantee you all that crap is going to come off so let me scrub them up and we'll have a look what they look like all right then there you go no trickery, that is what they look like. So, 
pretty much like brand new to be fair no crap left anywhere on there handles are nice and clean once i've done that this is the stuff that's going to protect them so like i said this wd-40 silicone lubricant give that a shake and then i'm literally going to coat any metal parts in that done just get all the metal parts covered in that silicon spray just work it open and closed a bit you can give it a rub in with your fingers if you want whatever that silicon lubricant is going to help sort of waterproof it so if you do have them out in the in the rain or whatever or in the back of the van then hopefully they're not going to go rusty these are like well over a year old probably 18 months old um, and that you know, I use these all the time, and that's how they look. I don't go to these ever usually, you know, as I showed you them, they were filthy dirty, and I did that on purpose, I left them like that. But usually what I'll do, once I've finished, before anything goes back in the bag, just get yourself a big wipe out, and just give it a wipe over with a big wipe, and I guarantee all that crap will come off while it's still fresh. And then just once every now and then, just give the metal bit to spray with this. That's all I do, so no fancy trickery. Um, and that's that's how I keep my tools like that. I like to look after my tools. That's just the way I am. I've got nothing against people who leave the tools dirty. You know, it's up to yourself how you do it. But I get asked a lot how I keep my tools looking fresh. So that is how I do it. Right now, I'm going off. I'm going to enjoy a beer. So massive thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned. Yeah, I'll have some more HVAC uh, conditioning content coming next week. So take it easy, guys. I'll catch you later.